Auto Offset for AutoCAD Civil 3D. Auto Offset is an add-on application designed to give users the ability to create multiple station offset point labels relative to an alignment. User-defined labels may consist of station, offset, elevation, description, and left or right of alignment designation. Once you install the program, you'll find a new Avatec tab in your tab list for your ribbon. In the panel, you will find four buttons relative to the Auto Offset command. The first command here is the Auto Offset command, which launches a dialog. And within the dialog, you can choose the parameters that you want to apply to your labels. The first is the label composition. This is where you choose which of the available components you'd like to include in your label, the order that you want them to be up here in the string, as well as user-defined text. In this example here, we've added the footmark after station and offset. You can control the component precision for station, offset, and elevation. We can control the text justification for both the left and the right side of the alignment. If you'd like, you can put all of the text labels on one side of the alignment, either the left or the right. In doing so, the left or right designation would come in handy. You can choose to use metric labeling for the stations, if, you, if you'd like. With regard to a placement of the labels themselves, we have an offset distance value, which you can type in directly here, or you can graphically select the offset distance in the drawing by picking points. We have a maximum offset distance, which is essentially a mechanism that allows us to control the labeling of points beyond the scope of the right-of-way or within the interest of the bounds of your project. We can choose the layer for the labels as well as the text style, noting that Auto Offset does support annotative text. And lastly, we can choose the alignment, either from the list or graphically by picking it on the screen. Once you've picked OK, you have the option now to select graphically the points that you'd like to include in your label. You also have the option to press Enter and then alternately choose the points by a point group. In this case here, I've already created a point group called AO Points that has just the points that are of interest with regard to labeling for offset information. And just like that, the labels have been created. In this case, hundreds of labels in literally a second. Once the auto offset labels have been created, you can very quickly and easily change the orientation of the label should you choose to do so by using the flip text command. Also, because the auto offset label text does support annotative text sizes, when we change the annotative scale of the drawing, the text will also update should you choose to use that option. Auto Offset is an excellent time-saving utility that allows you to quickly and accurately identify topographic information relative to an alignment. This is particularly useful for strip topo work or municipal reconstruction of roads or infrastructure within the right-of-way where it's important to identify the location of things such as trees and utilities for restoration purposes. Auto Offset for AutoCAD Civil 3D. Hi, my name is Daniel Chopic, and I want to spend a couple minutes showing you the AutoCAD Civil 3D Pressure Pipe Workflow Bundle offered by Imaginate Technologies. The Pressure Pipe Workflow is a bundle of tools that will enable the user to design and lay out the horizontal and vertical alignments of a pressure pipe system using the tools offered by Civil 3D. The bundle consists of multiple drawings that will hold a number of alignment, profile, structure, and pipe object styles, label styles, rule sets, parts lists, and special dynamic blocks are included to aid the user in the horizontal and vertical layout of pipe bends. Every pressurized piping system has two design elements, one being horizontal and one being vertical. What I'm going to do here is simply run an AutoCAD offset on my centerline alignments creating simple AutoCAD polylines. Now a polyline can be very quickly and easily filleted, chamfered, trimmed, extended, or stretched into representative horizontal waterline geometry. If the polyline curve radius is too small for a waterline deflection, then I can fill it the two tangents entering and exiting the curve uh, with a radius of zero. 
or using AutoCAD 2011's polyline grip editing functionality, I can convert that curve into a line. From there, I can construct any kind of bend configuration necessary. Once the horizontal geometry of the waterline has been achieved with the polyline configuration, I can create alignments from those polylines. On deflections that may require bends, we can apply a tangent intersection label using a style that uh, is supplied in the bundle to check the actual bend values. I can edit the alignment geometry bend locations if necessary until the tangent intersection bend labels return values within an acceptable range of the standard bend values. Now because it's an alignment, I can open up my alignment geometry editor and add PIs or anything else I would need to do to modify this alignment geometry until it is the correct layout for my waterline. Once the horizontal geometry has been finalized, I can create a surface profile utilizing my waterline alignment, my proposed grading surface, and place that into a profile view. Now in my profile view, I want to make sure that I'm not going to be showing any labels, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use a label set of no display, as well as I do have the ability to now show vertically any of the existing systems or, or other piping systems that I have already modeled. So I'll create that in a profile view and place that over there. And I can now start with my vertical design. Now I'm going to start my vertical design by creating a proposed profile. Okay, This profile by layout is going to be created and defined using the existing or the proposed surface as a guide. Now as I do that, I'll just draw, uh, draw tangents here. Um, I can stay as close to the surface as I need to uh, for my particular design. Now once I get that initially laid in, I can come back up here and drop the PIs, the d uh, minimum depth, uh, whatever uh, berry that you might be using. Now once that's uh, dropped, we can see our labels are showing all of our horizontal bends. Okay, they will show the label set has been applied and it will show the location of the horizontal bends or deflections as well as the locations and values of any vertical bends and deflections that, were, that we may add. Now if any pipe conflicts exist, we can clean those up using profile geometry editing. The pressure pipe workflow bundle comes with a number of dynamic blocks that will aid you in the layout of bend configurations. One that we may look at here is a 45 degree vertical bend configuration to go underneath this uh, storm pipe. Now to do that we need to insert the block but we need to insert that block in a known location. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and label the station and elevation of the bottom of this storm pipe. Now from that I can insert my, uh, my dynamic block using a transparent command for station and elevation and I can type in the, uh, the station of 62 57 and the elevation and I can take into account the uh, clearance I need for that uh, uh, pipe crossing. Now this dynamic block once selected you'll see has a number of grips to allow me to modify the block and set it up you know, exactly how I need this, uh, this 45 degree uh, configuration to be built. To edit the profile geometry, we'll insert PVIs and grip edit them into the desired locations. Since the block is being used as a template, we can simply O-snap to the vertices that we want to use to drop in the PVIs. Once we're done, you can see that all of those uh, PVIs are now denoted with the labeling for its station and uh, vertical bend values. Annotation for all horizontal and vertical deflections uh, are not required and a fitting can be removed individually from a profile or an alignment simply with the profile uh, editing tools and the alignment editing tools adding or taking away vertices. The remaining annotation will be used as a reference when placing pipe structures after creating the pipe network. At this point, the horizontal and vertical design of the waterline is complete. To translate the alignment into a pipe network, I'm going to first create a feature line 
from that alignment. Go ahead and select my waterline alignment from a list here. As I go through here, you can see that it's going to pull the vertices off of a profile. So with that, as I hit OK, I will have created a feature line over here in plan view that is horizontally controlled by the alignment and vertically linked to the, uh, the profile. So here in plan view, I'm going to go ahead and create that pipe network from my objects. Now, I'm going to use my feature line here, and I, I can go ahead and ignore flow direction. Um, I'll go ahead and name my uh, water line, my pipe network, and I can use a parts list. So here we can see that we have access to DIP pipe or PVC pipe. I'll go ahead and use PVC, and I can select uh, default pipes and structures that I want the pipe network to be created with. Um, I'll obviously go through here and swap parts as necessary, so I'll just go ahead and use a 4 inch T. Um, I can select the surface that I want it to reference as well as the alignment that I would like it to reference, whether I want it to call station and offset values from the waterline alignment or from the center line of road alignment, the Madison Avenue, uh, there. Now, I do want to go ahead and use the vertex elevations. By using the vertex elevations, it will insert a structure at all of my horizontal vertices as well as vertical uh, profile vertices. Um, basically, every vertex of the, uh, of the feature line. Now, by using those elevations, it's going to insert the structures at those elevations. Now, depending on how far I moved my profile down, um, I can specify whether that profile that the feature line is watching um, is in reference to the center line of the pipe, the outside top, the crown, so on and so forth. So as I select all of that and hit OK, it creates a pipe network in place of that feature line. That demonstration was done in the pressure pipe sample DWG, but the pressure pipe tools drawing contains the same tools found in that sample drawing, but it contains no objects. This means you can insert that tools drawing into your current template, which will insert all of the styles, rules, and parts lists. From there, if you want to rename the styles, uh, you can do so without affecting the style sets and the parts lists, and those changes will be dynamic. If you wish to assign layers to objects, uh, to the object styles, the component layers, you can do those, and it'll again all be dynamic through all the settings. Uh, if you wish to assign uh, layers, text styles, and all that kind of stuff to the label styles, again you can do that without being detrimental to the tools. Furthermore, uh, QTO can be configured to the parts list so that quantity takeoffs can be automated. The Pressure Pipe Workflow Bundle is an optimized collection of tools that takes advantage of Civil 3D's ability to obtain and manipulate horizontal and vertical geometry values via alignments and to translate that data into pipe networks. When alignment geometry has been finalized, it is translated into pipes and structures which can be automatically drawn and labeled and then quantified in QTO. The collection consists of structure library, tutorial files, a user's guide, and an empty drawing file containing only the workflow tools which can be easily inserted into your Civil 3D template. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please let us know.